Hey YouTube family and Captain Crunch family, it's Dr. Bove. Tonight is a special night. We are here on location at my friend Mark Schodel's place, the Physical Therapy and Wellness Institute. One of the most common questions I get in the office is, what do I do? I got just shoulder pain and why flim flam it? Let's go to the experts. So follow us, hang out with us tonight. We're going to do some stuff that you do at home. We're going to do things here. Uh, and Mark is going to take us through. So, thank you. This is going to be good. awesome. Awesome. Man, follow Thanks, us. guys, for the opportunity. So, Drew, come on over. How are you feeling today? Good yourself. How's the shoulder going? Yeah. Good. Let me see you raise that arm up. Good. And back down. And let's go behind the back. Where's your pain? Right. Okay. Here. Let's uh, come on over. Have a seat right here. All right, so Drew's pain is right in through the, the kind of front side of the shoulder. Um, typically, what we see with, with rotator cuff injuries, impingement, bursitis, is that presentation. Yeah. Typical pain will hang out right around here, come over here. Sometimes it even comes down and refers down as far as the elbow. Um, so my job and what we diagnosed earlier on with, with Drew is he's got what we call subacromial impingement, which affects some of the rotator cuff structures. We may know uh, rotator cuff, forward muscles, um, they help support, stabilize the shoulder and help bring it through a variety of movements up around, reaching out, reaching back. Um, so with Drew and this pain in here, when he raises his arm and he reaches behind his back, um, I focus treatment on this area, but even more important, in through the shoulder blade. Most important to take away pain get some relief in here is you have to make sure you have a, a stable foundation. So Drew, remember those posture exercises we were working on before? That I need to work you on? Gotta straighten up and you pull the shoulders back. So just reviewing and making sure that he's able to stabilize the shoulder blade when he goes to reach, if he goes to lift something, um, that the shoulder blade is not doing this, that it's back in that motion. Okay, so well, some treatment that I'm gonna do, Drew, let me have you lay back. Head up here at the pillow. Okay. So different hands-on treatment uh, that has really been uh, effective for, for Drew in the past is some joint mobilization that then we segue into some stability training. So some joint mobilization and what we work on is I'll come in here, find the glenohumeral joint where the ball meets the socket. And I'm going to apply some pressure, really open up the shoulder. And I'll do this for a, a period of time. And then I'll work my way through to different angles, different movements. I may then test his range and see where restriction might still be and then work from there. So restriction still in this position. I may apply some rotational movements, and there's a variety of, of, of things that I will do, but it's specific to the person. And that's one of the uh, interesting things that I picked up initially is that Drew went through a whole exam before we started this process. So Mark is well aware of the condition of his shoulder. Uh, I love YouTube and I love looking at you know different videos, but. This is a, a clip of treatment, not diagnosing how we got here. Mark already knows exactly what's been going on with Drew for a while. He's an established patient for years. So, beautiful. We leave all the boring stuff out, Paul. <laughs> yeah. we, we get right down to it here. Right. All right, so after I put Drew through some of that, then we actually will do a little bit of arm wrestling. All right, he's tried to, uh, to defeat me, but I'm undefeated in this uh, arm wrestle maneuver. So I'm going to hold the, your arm right here. Okay, you're going to just keep it there. Not let me move you around too much, all right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to randomize these movements here. Really work on his stability through that shoulder. Now, this is a, like a neuromuscular reset. So what this um, does is it helps tell the rotator cuff how it needs to activate in certain situations. So say for example, Drew's trying to reach out for a door that's closing behind and quickly goes to grab it. Well doing maneuvers like this is actually gonna help those rotator cuff muscles know how to respond and grab that door. How to catch a ball, how to throw a ball, different uh, maneuvers there. Relax that, 
Okay, now, Drew, what we're going to do is draw the sword. So we're going to go from your uh, opposite pocket on the right side, and you're going to come up down here towards the floor, okay? I'm going to apply some resistance as you're going through this motion. Okay, come up, up, up towards the floor, and then pull down and across. Up towards the floor. Make sure you're breathing. <laughs> How does that feel? Good. As good as this can feel. <laughs> and then relax. So we go through a variety of rounds with that. Um, Drew's well versed. I, 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 I tell him. He might come in the first session with the coffee, but he leaves here and when he's done with the sweatband and the Gatorade. <laughs> Flip one to your right side, won't you, Joe? So a variety of, of, of treatments. Um, here, it's just trying to activate the muscles back there before we get into some exercises. So we, first, we did some joint mobilization, worked on maybe some stretching. Then we did some what we call rhythmic stabilization. That was the last thing we did. And, and now I'll get in here. Again, this is specific to Drew and his condition here. Everyone gets a tailored program. But I'm going to start making sure that the muscles in his shoulder blade really activate. So I'm going to do some tapping in through here. And then, Drew, what I want you to do from here is push back into my hand. Good. All right? And then relax. Okay? And then push back again. And then relax. Okay? And then here and push back. Good. And then relax. Again, one more time. Push back. And then relax. Okay, good. All right, come on up. So what that technique does is it seems very basic, but in, in, in this condition here, it's to help facilitate the shoulder blade muscles to be able to pull back and really engage. Okay, a lot of people are stuck in this posture. And you say, pull your shoulder blades back, and they do this. They don't get much mobility through that. Um, so working on different positions, tapping the muscle can help stimulate and, and really get those, uh, the muscles to start firing the right way. Come off the table here for me, Joe. So in typical sessions, we'll segue from some hands-on with the therapist, and then we go through some, some guided exercise. Exercises will do stuff that they can't do at home in the clinic, and then we'll segue to where we're giving a home program. We have set in the past, Drew, up with some, some bands to do at home. Um, we've, we've told him some household items and even some things potentially that he purchases. We try to keep that to a minimum, but uh, when, when needed, if it's a really effective exercise, most clients are, are, are willing to, uh, to, to make a small purchase if needed. Come on over here, Drew. All right, so we're really working that left shoulder. Drew, what I want to do is we're talking about pulling that shoulder blade back. Okay, you're going to do a row, pulling back through the shoulder blade with a slight rotation at the forearm there, just like that. Okay? I don't want this movement where you're tipping that shoulder forward. Gotcha. Okay? I want it straight back, really in through here. Okay. A row is a very functional uh, exercise. We're, we do rows and combinations all throughout our, our daily life. Pull back in through there. That's it. Good. Good. Pull down. Good. Try to look straight ahead. Try not to bend your neck into it. Looking out. Okay. <laughs> so it's important that we really review technique because the more someone's rowing as weight gets heavy, as he's cranking his neck into it, you know, he might end up with a neck strain. Um, which may end up then seeing uh, Dr. Bove here right. as a result. <laughs> Typically, we'll do a series of these. We may vary from a high row, very functional, you're reaching the cabinets, you're pulling things down, climbing into a higher vehicle where you got to grab onto the handle. Row is very, very functional. And then we'll progress. You know? Drew hates doing yard work. He absolutely hates it. But he has to. So, what do you do? You got to start the lawnmower. You got to pull weeds. You got to do stuff. We'll get very functional, you know, uh, with these exercises. So, Drew, the next one here, you're going to start from this position, and you're going to pull up like that. Okay. Again, the number one thing I'm looking for, Drew, is not tipping your shoulder down. It's keeping that back, right in through there. Okay. Give that a try. Okay. Look right about here. There you go, pull right down into there. Perfect. How's that feel? Good. Good. Let's do a few reps of that. Good. Feel the shoulder beat. <laughs> Perfect. There you go. So yes, when the client can uh, let us know that he's feeling it in the correct spots, it always uh, means a lot there. Accuracy is important. So now we talk about what you do at home. All right. So I have had Drew purchase a, a little ball. Um, 
get them at the dollar store a lot of times, those Walmart bins, you know, uh, somewhere in there. And with this ball, we work on stability through the shoulder blade um, and overall endurance of the shoulder. So, Drew, you're going to have your hand on the ball, okay, just like so. Your thumb is slightly rotated out to about, you know, 1 o'clock, between 1 and 2 o'clock. From here, you're in, and we're going to do counterclockwise circles. Just like that. Without one. So here we're working on rotator cuff stability, engagement through the shoulder blade muscles, and we're also working a little muscle um, that sits inside the shoulder blade and comes down like this called the serratus anterior, and that muscle is responsible for the last bit of reaching, okay, they call it the boxers, the puncher's muscle, it's that jab motion, that last bit of reaching. Um, but that also, uh, muscle, serratus anterior, also works with when someone reaches up, it helps upwardly rotate the shoulder blade to give more clearance so that they can reach up in space like that. We can really see like how, how his shoulder blade is moving, you know, this angle here, it's beautiful. Uh, dollar store ball, amazing, you know, it's not a huge investment at all. Are these those bands you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, so we're going to get into the bands. <laughs> um, there's, there's a lot of, of, of really good exercises um, that, that comes with this. And, and what's good about a client having a band? Now, all my clients, they come in, if I prescribe a program with a band, I will give them their, their, their first band. Um, from there, if they really are, are into it, it's really doing well, then I'll t usually lead them to either an e-store that we have, um, you know, or Amazon, uh, whichever they're comfortable with, to, to set themselves up with a, with, with a further set. Um, so, Drew, very similar to what we did on the table where we kind of drew the sword and, and, and that, we're going to work on the motion here. I'm going to have you face the wall. Um, you're going to grab the band here and pull that band down just like this. Okay, the focus is that shoulder blade locking in the position at the end. Okay, give that a try. Like that? Yeah, okay. grip down a little bit lower. Perfect. All right, elbow straight, just like this. And you're going to pull down and put your palm towards me right there. Okay, back up, down, palm. Okay, last bit here, Drew. Pull that shoulder blade there, okay? And look straight ahead. There you go. Variety of angles of movement, okay? We start off at first time a little bit easier. He's kind of pulling more straight down on a slight angle. As he progresses, gets a little bit uh, more involved, it's gonna be more of a cross body motion. Definitely more challenging for the cross body motion. We wanna make sure that they're pretty much pain free in, in those uh, reaching cross body positions first. How's that feel? Okay. If they have trouble getting into position, I'll come over and give a little bit of cueing. Okay, as he comes down, I'm just going to reach in here and cue that shoulder blade a little bit. Perfect. Come across. How's that feel there? Good. All right. Good. And relax that. Okay. Another uh, band exercise, okay, they have loop bands. I got a whole set of, of these resistance bands for $8 on Amazon, okay? Um, variety of different brands, but it comes with five different resistance levels. Um, true. We're going to hold like this in this position, and you're going to... Do this exercise here. Call this exercise a no money. Okay, it's got no money. You need to have the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. All right. Okay, you're looking straight ahead. Posture's everything. Beautiful. And pull him back through. Now he's really engaged in the rotator cuff muscles going through, but then most importantly as well, in through the shoulder blade. His middle trapezius, his rhomboids, he's working through his posterior deltoid muscles. It also helps open up the chest, so getting out of that forward posture that, that a lot of us get in, all the computer work we do, you know, the Netflix binging during the pandemic, um, sitting in the car for long periods of time. So we'll have to remind our clients a lot, look straight forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so the kids with the phone, yeah, the text snacks, yes. you know, the, the, the iPads, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Very, very much. More younger and younger you know, as, as they go. Okay, how's that feel? You can feel this burger across my entire back. There you go. Awesome. All right. Working good. So you check in. We check in with him. You can stop there. Uh, and make sure, again, it's a guided program. It's important because he's going to sit there and then after so many reps, it might change into this position. So it's important for us to 
stay on top of the technique, um, you know, make sure uh, accuracy is everything. That's the blessing of, of being here at, a, at PGW, at, at a physical therapy institute, is that the hands-on care. You know, and once they prepare you and, and you've been through the, the program, then you're ready to do this at home, sure, because you know the postures, you know your positions, you know how to do it. So, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. You know, a after these um, exercises and treatments, you know, uh, 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 Drew will, will attest to this. It's building out the home program, really making sure that they're doing that and correctly and thorough, and then we progress it because you don't want the program to get stale. We want the person to make sure that they're reaching their goals. So if the goal is coming in and they're able to catch a ball overhead again, and it's something we really think is feasible for them to get back to doing it, we want to make sure that we're challenging them, putting them through the, the, the ringer for it. As long as they're progressing and it's, it, their, their pain's not spiking and everything is, is moving along in a functional way, uh, then the sky's the limit. Really, the imagination is uh, the only thing that limits you. Thank you for being our model tonight, Drew. My pleasure, yes. uh, This is awesome. It's been a really educational. Thank you all for, for viewing, for watching, for searching, and uh, getting information and education. Uh, so stay tuned. We have many more educational videos coming up. Thank you again, Mark. All right, make sure you subscribe. Captain Crunch DC. See you soon.